Hi, my name is Jessie. Uh, welcome to my tutorial. I have had a lot of folks ask me about uh, using the two needle method, so I figured I might as well just put a video together for you. Um, so real quickly, this is the one of the finished earrings. You will notice through the video I do change the cab out. It, anyways, you'll see that. So, uh, but these are the main things that we need. We need our, I have the, the original center cab here, glued down. I use um, Gorilla Glue gel to keep it down and it dries pretty quickly in low odor. So, anyways, and this is a stiff felt. A lot of other beaters use Pellin. This is just what I'm comfortable with. Uh, it's just, it's pretty good and stiff and durable. I've never had any issues with it and it's what works for me. Uh, we have a good beeswax. You don't want to use the synthetic stuff. It just isn't the same. Uh, good quality beeswax really makes a difference in conditioning your threads and helping it stretch and making it a lot easier to work with. Uh, a lot of other folks use different threads. I've tried many other threads. This is my favorite. I love it. 1G. It doesn't fray on you. Um, it's, yeah, it's just to me the best one to work with. I love it. I already have all my colors set out. Even if I only need one or two beads out of the whole jar, I still like to have them all here. It just makes it quick and easy. Uh, we are going to use wire guards for anyone that's never used those before. We put that here. I'll bead it on. I'll show you whenever we go to do the edging how we add that on. Even with the peyote stitching, um, I've had folks say that they weren't sure how to get that done. So I will show you. And then our little um, 18 karat gold hooks, just in case anyone has some kind of metal allergies, I at least try and get 18 karat or more ho hooks. So, and then for Charlotte beads, um, I love having my super sharp tweezers. I just got these on Amazon. It was a, um, a pack of two of them for like 12 bucks. I love them. And then you gotta have your little scissors. So easy enough, nothing fancy, just whatever works for snipping your threads. Okay, so I am working on a set of earrings with two needle technique. And so there will be two needles. The first needle is, I prefer to do it where it's straight and pretty much a fairly new one. And it is fully closed off at the end. And this will be the one you'll use to load up the thread on or load up the beads on. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry, and full disclosure, I have my little kids in the background. So enjoy the kid babbles and the... Uh, kids movies anyways so and then my second needle it's usually well worn I'm using this one to help tack down the beads once I get them loaded up on the other thread and it is just tied on one side and loose on the other so it'll just be a single thread tacking everything down so first thing I'm gonna do is get the one with the double where it's not at the end here take this now, a lot of times I'll start here and just start loading up beads and putting whatever design around the edge. But I am going to put little flowers on here to go with this cute little bee theme. So, come up here. And then I'm gonna make a sunflower. So I have my brown here I've already picked up. Get it fairly close. Tack that down. Go through the loop here just to make sure it's good and secured to start off with holding that little tail down okay so that's standing up and now it's ready for me to load up my little flower or many okay so got my brown here tacked down so i'm gonna get my yellow and the yellow that i'm using are charlotte's everything size 11 but these are charlotte's and i get them from Sheen. Let's see. So we'll pick up seven of these. One, two, three. There we go. Sometimes six, sometimes seven. It just depends on what bead you're using, what size they are. So. Close down. Kind of place them around here. And then I'll go through these two here. Just snug, just enough to hold everything fairly close together. And then, happy with about where I want it, holding these down. I'm just gonna tack it down here. Send this one down. And then the trick about two needle 
beading is that a lot of folks get caught up in how to handle the two sets of thread and needle at the same time. So what I do is I grab it and I wrap it around this one on my finger like that, just enough. So cover over that first loop to hold it down. And then here, and then it looks like it's on there tight, but it's really not, it doesn't bother me at all. So hold it just snug enough, and you may have to unwrap it, wrap it again a couple times just to figure out where you're comfortable. So, now, I got that one, so it's out of the way. So, it's just, hold, it's just held snug, just enough to kind of keep it secured, but not too tight. So now I got my tacking needle, and I'm going to come up as close as I can. Get that to focus, there you go. Get that up here. And then I'm going to, again, excuse the kiddos. So, and now with this flower, I'm going to tack it down between each side. Pull that for you. There it goes. So, everything. I'll kind of fold that down a little bit for the first few times. Kind of hold down these spare threads there. There. So, got my little sunflower. Tack down one. Tuck it down. Hey, girls. Hey. Shh. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck it down between each one. My kids are trying to play in a fort. So, tucking this down again. Okay, so one of, I got another flower there tucked down. And then... So, one of my favorite things I love about these Charlotte cut beads is that they have that little sparkle to them and the light hits them just right, but they're not glittery. So, but my favorite tool, got to have these super, super sharp. I mean, they, these will definitely poke you. They're pretty sharp little tweezers. But I love these because I can take them and let's say I got to turn one of these. I can get it right inside of the bead, grab it, and turn it right where I want it so it will catch the light as we're wearing them. So... Um, those are all pretty much good. You can kind of push it or turn it. There you go. So it's more upright. Good. There we go. All right. So those are tacked down. Now, and I'll always be kind of throughout using my fingers and fixing up the little flowers. But so I got the second one tacked down and tied off. I'm going to grab the needle that I used to load up. That's double threaded there. And I'm going to put on some leaves. So we'll put a leaf, let's see, we'll put a little leaf here. Mm, yeah, we'll put one here. Why not? So grab one of my green beads, which these ones are also from Sheen, the uh, Charlotte cut. So I don't catch that light. And there's no perfect way. You can lay them down however. And one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was, one, tr trust the process. If you're not too sure how it's going to look, just keep going with it. Let it go on for a while. And then if you're not happy with it, you can change it later. But sometimes the best accidents ends up making it the prettiest project. So it ends up coming out great. A lot better than you expected. So I'm going to double tap this one. And what I'm doing is I'm actually making like an X through it like this. That way it'll stay more or less where I want it. So I have that tiny little piece of thread on one side. And go through. And I'm actually going to bring this way down here. Mommy, help me get this ghost. What do you need help with? Let me close that cake, me. Just a second. I got you, babe. There we go. We'll turn that. Okay. Now I will flip it over. Tie these off. I will help you, baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wrap it twice. Pull through. Okay, 
So got that bridle one tacked down, made a knot in the back, pull that thread up here, my double stitch. You guys okay? All right, got my doubled up thread here. I'm gonna grab my yellow Charlotte's. And if you're curious about exactly which ones I'm using, just you know, leave a comment and I'll try and answer you, let you know where I got them and exactly what colors they are. All right, so wrapping these around again, kind of holding it there a little bit. Nope, wrap it around, holding it down. And then gonna put it through the first two beads again. Okay, so tacking these down just to hold that in place. But I'm not gonna make a knot in case for whatever reason I need to take it apart. So I'm just gonna here, I'm just gonna wrap it around my finger, holding down that first loop there. And then just wherever it's secure. And it just kind of lays in my hand, just like that. And I think, like I said before, this is the part that tricks everybody up with having two needles is what do they do with the other thread. So just tie it towards nice and snug. It's not tight at all. And then have my other needle over here. Now, yeah. come up. And then I did, oh, let's see real quick before I do that. I'm gonna make a quick anchor point here. So it's not pulling tension from way over here. There we go. Hey, you two play nice, please. Get out of her chair, play nice. Okay, so got that on there. They're both trying to, they have their own little chairs, but of course they're both trying to fit in the same chair. Okay, so now come up, make sure I tack down between every bead. And it doesn't necessarily have to look perfect now because you can always fix it later. Use your thumb or your fingers or tweezers to get them to lay down the way you want. So I'm putting just enough tension to hold it down. So, Two best piece of advice I ever got was let your beads breathe because I was always the worst about thinking, oh, I got to cinch them down super tight and it's going to make it better. But then it just causes them to, to bunch and it's just not pretty. So we got to let our beads breathe and trust the process. So like if you're not too sure of how it looks, you know, in the middle of you, you in the middle of your project, just keep going with it. Eventually you'll be surprised. Oh, she comes out looking really nice and a lot better than you expected. So trust the process, let your beads breathe. Okay, so I have all my little flower, my little sunflowers are done. I uh, use my super awesome sharp tweezers, turn everything where I want them, all my leaves are in where I want, and the flowers are good. So next I'm going to add in a cute little bee because, you know, why not? So I had already looped, this is my double threaded needle, and I've already looped it and made a knot and secured it in. So I'm going to pull this there, and I am going to get a, these are super simple, yellow, black, and yellow again. Now I went through my beads and the thing with check beads is that sometimes some pieces are smaller, some are larger. So I went through and tried to find the smaller, thinner one just so it would, I think, fit better. So let me pull this through. Again, we don't want it super snug, just snug enough. So you don't want it too tight because then it's going to See how it's going to kind of tend to fall over like that. So we want it to be a little looser, not so snug. Remember, looser is not better. So leaving a little bit of room. And right here where my thumbnail is, I get the focus. Right where my thumbnail is, I'm going to put this needle down in there. I have to do it. Okay, and now I'm going to hold this thread here again, wrap it around just so it's nice and snug. 
I'm going to hold it here and then I'm going to grab my single needle so now I'm going to grab my single needle here and so I will come up as close to the threads as I can there we go And back as close to that other thread as I can. So and then I'll fold that little tab down. Okay. And then now the next thread or the next slot here. Hold on them close. There we go. Pull it up. Tack it down. There we go. So, using that, looks like a cute little bee. And then, what I'm going to do with my double looped needle is I'm going to go back through it one more time. Just to kind of fill that space with the beads. And then it'll lay even cleaner. I don't do that with everything, I only do that with certain things. Some folks do it through every single bead, every row, but I just do it with certain ones. So, then tack him down, let's put it down right there, pull him through, and there's one cute little bee, and then what I'm going to do is flip it over, tie it off or tie a knot so loop twice make a little suit or knot there and then again because I'm going to cut these so I'm going to double knot this make sure it's good and secure nice and snug and then before I cut it see how it's kind of tilted up this way so what I'll do is I'll take this needle here this keeps things cleaner I'm gonna pull it down that way whenever I cut this tail it will be facing down so there is that cute little bee and then I'm going to add one more down here okay so got my second little bee and then since my thread is already there I'm just going to start from over here um I did make a tiny little knot right there just to kind of anchor it down so that way whenever I go to pull on here I'm not pulling on the bee and distorting it so this is my double threaded needle and this is what I'm going to use to load up my beads because now I'm just going to start just doing white and just going to start filling here with white. So, what I'm going to do start loading it up. I don't know. And you just get as many beads as you feel comfortable holding and working with. So, but, anyways, so I've got plenty here. Now, again, this second needle here, I'm going to take it, wrap it around, kind of hold down that little tail, and then I'm just gonna hold it here. And sometimes you may have to like adjust, come forward, or come back, whatever you need to do to make your hands comfortable. So, okay, so, so here I got a little bit of, I'm trying to get that to come in clear. So I have a little bit of a tail there, which is perfectly fine because as it goes all the way around, then I'm going to run this same needle through there and cinch it up a little bit tighter. So now whenever I go through and do a circle, sometimes I go through every one, sometimes I go through every two. It just all depends. But but here, I'm going to go down between each one because it looks nicer. So, so 
Just come up as close as you can. And then tack it down. And like I said before, you don't want this being too tight. So you want to make sure you're not pulling this string too tight the entire time. Because then when you let go, it won't lay flat. So just pulling this through and giving it just enough of a pull. Just a little, a little light tug. Just make sure it's set. Be a lot of folks that are worried about the two needle method. This one here is completely out of my way. It's laid up all over my tray. It's out of the way, the way I'm holding it. It was definitely a struggle at first, but once I got used to it, I love it. I feel like my projects come out cleaner, find it simpler instead of trying to, you know, guess where to put my needle with the one, but everyone is different. And every single beater has their own preference. Everybody has their own style. Everybody learned differently. Um, everyone just has something that works different for them. So this is just what works best for me. And once you learn some basics, you can definitely do whatever works for you. So I'm going to keep going all the way around. Okay, so I have all the white around and tacked down. I got all my leaves added in. Um, now, let's see, I filled in a little bit of space here, in which I will show you how to do that kind of in this area here. But for now, I'm going to show you an easy way to put the little bee in instead of just tacking it down and beating around it. Just simply enough, I've got all this tacked down already. Just get a little yellow, black, okay, black, yellow, and then down and then of course I'll get my tweezers later on and I'll turn it all around but easy enough there's it'll be just within the rest of the group and then I'm gonna get my last couple whites here tack those down and actually I've been saving the really thin white ones because I may use those to fill in the little gaps so and my favorite little bowl is actually this little spoon bowl but it's a nice little wooden bowl it makes things easier to see so, I like it. It works for me. So, that's all in there. And now, these three whites are actually all pretty thick. So, I'm just going to take those out. See if I can't find more average sized. Those three will work. Because that tiny little bit of a dip really does make a difference. So those on there we go and that left us with a little bit of space to make sure nothing groups and bunches up so I'm just gonna tack these down real quick And also too, really important that, especially on the very outer edge, all of your thread and your needles are lower than the beads. Because depending on what kind of edging you do, sometimes you have to cut right along the beads so that way you don't see the felt. So the last thing you want is a piece of thread or tacking string right above and end up cutting it. I have done that before and um, I've done it just a couple of times. Depending on what the project is, it's not too big of a deal, but what I'll do is I'll actually take either a tiny bit of crazy glue on a toothpick or even a tiny bit of clear nail polish, I've done that before, and just barely just brush it enough to kind of lay it down, kind of brush it down with it, hold it down. And usually it's only just been one thread. If it's more than one or two threads, I'll actually just kind of go through and redo it. So, okay, so I have a couple more beads attacked down. So now that I know the bead count is good. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in. So sorry that this isn't focusing quite the way I would like it to. Okay. Mm 
Last tack down. And then, so I'm going to cut down my tacking thread here in a second, my single thread. So I'm going to make sure I tie a good knot, make sure it's good and secure and not going anywhere. Take this, since it's kind of upward, make sure everything stays below that last beading line. So when I go to cut, I don't get anything on accident. And then I've already cut a little bit of the backing off or cut out some backing. So for here though, I do want to make sure, so the backing that I'm doing or the edging that I'm doing, I want, I'm going to do a peyote stitch. So I want a little tiny bit, nah, maybe about a bit of beads width all the way around, making sure I don't cut any of those little strings anywhere. Make sure I'm kind of feeling on the back side too. Kind of being aware of that. Now what I love about the peyote stitch is that it is great for um, if any of your edges are you know 100% smooth like here has a little bit of a bump, little bit of a raise to it or anything like that it helps kind of smooth it out or it's less noticeable not like it really matters anyways but there we go so this cute little butterfly I'll take it and put a little glue in there here in a minute and then so I'm going to take a little bit of girly glue I like the gel because I want to make sure it really gets into these threads a little bit put some on here but don't get around the edging because then it's going to be really hard because then it's going to be really hard to get your thread through so I'm going to line that up here in a second okay so next this is the peyote stitching um, like I said before it's one of my favorites because it helps smooth things out. I think it looks really nice and rounded, but the downside is that to me, it takes the longest. So if you're wanting to do a project that um, you want to kind of just get done and over with, peyote stitch is not the right stitch unless you just you know really want to. But to me, I think it's the one of the prettiest ones. But anyways, so I made a little... I got focused, made a little knot right there. Um, and then I just kind of just tucking the tail in, make sure everything's nice and secure. I kind of got this guy a little long. So we'll just snip that off. So, all right, got that on there. Push this through. Now, Make another knot with it real quick. And then I'm gonna go through the back side to start. I'm gonna come, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come forward to start, kind of down in between those beads. There we go. Now, for the first time, as you're getting it set up, you're gonna to wanna to pick up three beads. One, two, and three. And then for this, I like laying them out. And yes, this little spoon dish, I know that it's, I love it. It's nice and flat. I can really see the height of all the beads. It's easy to pick them up. Okay, anyway, so I got that. I'm gonna wrap it around again. So it's nice and straight where the other one was. So pulling that down. So now the thing about this is that you actually do want to pull it pretty tight, nice and snug, um, because you actually want these two come on focus you actually want the two bottom beads to be touching so this one in the middle is sitting on top of the two beads if there's a big gap which i can actually pull it tighter here in a minute as i add more beads but if there's a gap between come here, if there's a gap between the two then this will actually fall in and it won't look very nice so all right 
So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to come at an angle at the next bead. Pick up a bead. And then, now these gold beads, I love these. They're, um, uh, a lot of folks have problems with um, metallics uh, rubbing off. I've had zero issues with that at all, period. So um, these are uh, Duracoat, um, yeah, Duracoat seed beads. And I got happened to get these ones here from powwowbling.com. Really good. Oh my gosh, the customer service. They are so sweet. Anyways, but, um, so yeah, I got these Duracoat metallics. I've had zero issues with them. Uh, anyways, so pick up a bead. Then we're going to go through this top one here. Pull through. Not too snug just yet. Pick up another bead. So that guy's just going to kind of sit there. And I'm going to come back here in line with this. Come here in line with this bead. So it's kind of going to look like a, um, like a five on a dice two, two, and then one in the center. So I'm going to go straight in on this one. I'm not going to go at an angle this time. So straight. Pull that. But as I pull this one, or put my needle through this one here, I can now pull it decently snug without worrying of messing up my work here. So as you can see, they're all nice and close together. That top bead is sitting on top of it nicely, sitting straight up. So that's how you want it to look. Like I said, it looks kind of like a little five on a dice. Now these ones here will lay out flatter as I finish it off and then these get cinched in. It'll lay out even cleaner. So now the point of this is you're making a pattern where it's top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. So. Now that I have that bottom, I'm going to get another bead to put one on top here. Come on, there it goes. Go through that back bead. Pull it through. And then, so the other one's sitting there. And now I'm going to put it in. Come on. Yes, I'm going to put it in just below that one in line, and now I'm going to come in at an angle. There it goes. I'm going to come in at an angle, but I don't want to go under a bead. There. So I have that. Pick up one bead, come through, go through you know, went through that one there. Pick up another bead to go in the back. And we're going to go straight through. Let's make sure I... Get in here. There. So I have a bead on this string here, so it's all... Coming in, like I said, when I come up through this front one again, that's when I can pull it nice and snug, making sure everything's touching nice and tight. So, so pretty. Pick up a bead for on top, put it in, putting it in the back one. And then now I'm going to go at an angle because I want to be able to put a bead here up front. So going straight down below that one here and add an angle. Pick up a bead. Got another bead, and then going through the back. I have that bead right here, tucking it back on the string. 
Yeah, and this one I actually want to go straight. Come on, focus. Nice and cinched. Now usually too, because this takes so long, and it usually doesn't take me quite this long, but just because I'm trying to show and make sure it's focuses on the camera. It doesn't quite take me this long, but it does definitely take a lot longer. So I usually will charge, charge probably like another $10 more just because it takes so long. And I think any beater will understand that. Anyone that sees that it's peyote stitch should understand just how long that takes. It's pretty and it's beautiful and it makes a big difference. So as you can see on the other one, it's just a matter of it's nice and it's rounded and it covers up the back and a lot of times too. Now here, because I did a lot of white, you know, I, I knew that the white thread in here would be okay. But a lot of times too, I'll actually make, I'll use a thread that matches um, that bead that I'm using and it looks even cleaner. So. But yeah, so that is what it will look like when it's done. So what I'll do when I go to put this on is I will finish beading around the entire thing. And then once I get it all at the end, I'll come back on the video and I'll show you how I finish it off and attach it. And then I'll show you how I add this guy on with the peyote stitch. Because as you can see, I attach it in the front. It doesn't sit on top like a lot of other edging patterns it will so like a single stitch um, edge you'll just kind of set it on top but yeah so I will show you that when I come back okay so with this particular stitch like I said it takes a long time and it uses a lot of thread um, so as you can see I've done this much maybe about just under half and it was an entire arm width of thread so did not take much so you will definitely be replacing thread at some point so I put on a bead here. You want to make sure you have plenty of thread left too. So come back through here. I put a bead on, come back through, done this one, have everything through the back. Okay. And then let me go through. So here, put it on, going through the back, and then I'm actually going to come forward. Okay, just underneath that last bead there. I'm actually going to fish it up through a couple beads back. That's why I said you want to make sure you have plenty of thread. And then I'm going to come back down this one, the second to the last one. down a little snug just to make sure everything stays clean but or else it's all lined up in there you can't see it so now I'm gonna go if you can grab here that thread there great um, sometimes I may have to go forward make a loop and come back and just make like another loop but since I was able to grab that thread okay I'm going to keep that loop I'm going to go through it once and then a second time. I'm going to go through it two times. Actually, just to be safe, let's go through it three times. So, and using your thumbnail, or maybe even tweezers or something like that to brace it, you want to pull it towards nice and snug. That knot is tied in there, nice and tight. And then you will just come back up through that same thread there. I'm going to kind of hide that knot a little bit. There you go. So it'll, and it's because I did three, but usually if I just do two, the knot will actually usually pop up into that bead. So and then I will, where my scissors go? Okay, so to make sure it looks clean, some people use a lighter 
Uh, I'm always afraid I'm going to mess up my work or make it noticeable. So what I do is the thread is a little stretchy. So you give it a good little pull there, wrapped it around my, wrapped it around my finger like this, giving it a good tight pull. So as I snip it, as you can see, the thread is just barely, or it has bounced back down into the bead for the most part. There you go. So nice and clean. So then, all right, so now you have that. And for purposes of the video, I got another string ready with the needle. So let's move this over. All right. So now what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing. I'm going to fetch it up through. So I have a little bit of a tail. So setting through here. Pull that through. And then eventually I will snip that little tail when it's pulled through. I always keep it nice and clean. So I'm just going to go through these beads here till I'm right back where I started. down through that last bead again. Now I'm going to go back in and bring that needle at an angle like that and then just picking up right where I left off and just keep on going. So just add a bead, put it through. Another bead. Coming into the back and straight forward because we're going to come up through that bead again. And then as I come up through here. Pull it nice and snug so everything this next row sits on top of it nicely. Coming on down. Alright, so I'm gonna finish this off and just keep going. Okay, so as you can see, we are here now at the end. Uh, you could almost fit two rows of beads, but like I've stressed before, we don't want to uh, bunch it up. So we'll come through here and pick up our last bit of beads. One here, here. Come on, bogus. Okay, now as I get this through here, we are actually going to go all the way to that very first bead in the row here. And I am going to connect these two. So that's in there. Oh, actually I take that back. We're going to go to this bead here. And we'll do one more top one. So we're done with the bottom ones, but I did need one more top one. That way everything will line up right. So down there, put that in, in the back. Coming forward now, we're going to the very first row of beads. Pulling that good and snug. And then as I pull up this one, JD, be nice, please. And as I pull up that one, 
I am actually going to go back through this last top one here. I know, quit hitting her. Sorry. Anyways, so coming up through that top one there. Come on, focus. Went through here. And now I'm going to go back to that other first row again. I'm going to try and link these together here. So, and then kind of like what we did whenever we were changing out the threads. Come on. I'm going to go back under, come through, and then I'm just going to follow along. As you can see, there's really no gap now. So I'm just going to keep following along with it for a couple rows, make sure everything's good and secure and snug. Through here. You did. Back. Okay. So now to tie it off, since I'm not going to be able to get underneath and get that thread to tie through, what I'll do is I will make my own loop. So staying up here close to the bead line here, where the rest of the threads are, coming through right below that gold there. I'm going to make my own loop. There. So now, see my string there? I'm going to go through it twice, once, twice. Put my thumbnail here. Get a good, strong, secure pull there. Make sure it's cinched up in there. Excuse my kids. All right, now I'm gonna take it through where that knot is. Boop, pops right in there. So, twist it around so I can get a good hold on it. Pull it nice and snug, and then snip it, and then it will recoil back into that bead. So now, we are done with that. I'll just kind of go around and a little bit, kind of make sure everything's lined up nicely. Like a, you can kind of tell the two and you come this way here. I always kind of roll it forward a little bit, which kind of helps realign everything. There you go. We have that. So. Next, we got to put the hook on, and I will show you how to do that with the wire guard. Okay, so I ran the thread through here. I'm going to, to put on the wire guard, I want to make sure it's good and secure. So here, going back through, let's see, making a loop. I'm sorry if you guys hear the kids moving in the back. So, pulling that down nice and snug. Now, I'm gonna run. Yes, we gotta be quiet. All right, so now we're gonna bring this needle up here. There we go. Okay, now we're just gonna run it through a couple. This is the phone. It is like a cell phone. Bringing it down here. Let's get that little tail off of there. Okay. So here, I'm going to come back up through this one, and this is where I am. Yeah. Yeah, you see, this is where I'm going to put the guard. So we're going to hold it here. And kind of push that in there. So I am actually going to come back with it, backwards with it. So here. Then grab my little wire guard, my thread guard, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to bring that down. So as you can see there, bring that down. And then I'm going to grab 
six beads, there we go, got those, and then Hey, you girls play nice, please. All right, so pull that down, nice and snug. And then I'm gonna come back through this one here. Try to get these threads out of the way. So I'm gonna come back to this one here next to it. Try to make sure I'm in front of the other threads that are running through that bead. There we go, I'm using my Fingernail to stabilize it, pulling it down, and then I'm going to come up through that bead again on the left side just to make it good and secure. Back down through the right one, like this, and then I have my little makeshift thimble here. Or a needle nose. There. Yeah, pulling it nice and clean. Putting it through to the other side. Making sure it's actually in the backing there. And then pull that. As you can see, it looks nice and clean. But again, in order for me to make a knot here, I'm just gonna make another loop. But since I've already put a good bit of thread through here, I'm just gonna kinda come back this way, just so it's less noticeable. But, because all we need is this, that's the important part. So, here. Okay, so we have that loop. Wrap it through twice. And just like before, pull it up nice and snug using my fingernail. Get it good. Tug, make sure everything's set. Pushing it in there nice and tight and happy. And then Coming up through that bead to kind of hide that thread. Pulling snugly. Let's see. And this one is from earlier, so same thing. Pull it snug. Just cleaning up the last of my threads here. There we go. So, that is finished. The only thing we gotta do is, and I have already opened the hook. Let's take that, hook it through. I don't know, honey. My kids are watching the movies. There we go. All nice and secure. And there we have a pair. We have a pair of the dragon. Alright, so secured on that hook. Now we have a fun summer pair of earrings. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you need any tutorials of any other kind of beading techniques or anything, please let me know in the comments. Or you can always uh, look for me on my Facebook or Instagram page, Bear and Fox Beadworks. My name is Jessie, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.